Ooh. Cosplay with the wife? You're a parent. You know what Bluey is. Hell yeah. Nice. Hey, welcome back to our stupid Rex of Corbin. I'm Rick. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thank you to everybody's sports on Patreon. Follow the Twitter account, subscribe and like button. And I am fragile. Interesting. <laughs> what the? Wow. It's, it's, a, it's a Ranveer. Yeah. It says I am fragile. It is. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Anyways, welcome back. Today we're doing a movie review. And you're like, right. Oh, Right, yeah. Shah Rukh Khan. Hello, yeah. my friend. Rick is here. We're just we're just so filming this differently, aren't we? We're totally. Yeah, here. we are. Oh yeah, I'm totally here. Um, we are we're doing this via Zoom because I my not me my my hmm. children have been sickish in varying degrees of it uh, past few days, and so just to be safe because Rick was sick, but we don't know if it's the same kind of sick, so. <laughs> You know, Everybody's been getting sick here, so yeah, it's yeah. just that time of year. Kind of insane. Uh, being, being careful. Being careful. That's, that's why we are on Zoom. But a yeah. highly requested film from last year, another one from last year, uh, 2023. Indeed. Even though, even though on IMDb it says 2022, which is very strange. Uh, I know. It, it did say 2022, and I actually put that when I put it on the list because it said that. No, no. It's, it's not, is it? It's it a came out, no, It film. came out sometime in November. Yeah. I forget. Yeah. Um, but another one that uh, we definitely didn't get in theaters here, uh, too small of a film, but starring a whole bunch of, well, actually not a whole bunch, one dosed, uh, three of us, uh, the, yes. uh, directed by, I say his name. Um, hold up my, oh, sorry. My, there we go. Uh, no, 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 no. I've got it. I'm pulling it up on IMDb. It's just, it's just slow. It's, it's, uh, Avanesh Arun also written by. Yeah, and he did uh, Patalok, I believe. He was one of the directors, I think, uh, on Patalok um, with Jaideep and also <clears throat> starring, hopefully, future dosed Shafali Shah. And yeah. uh, uh, to, sh what's his name? Uh, Shwanand Herkir, who we've seen in uh, quite a few things just off the, the yeah. three IMDb things, Three Idiots, Kaipoche, Barfi, I'm sure actually quite a few other things uh, that we've seen him in. Um. And, oh, the uh, the director was also the uh, cinematographer on this. Wow! So he written, kind of, directed, uh, and cinematography. Uh, cinematography. No. Uh. Wow. Anyways, very cool. Uh, it just came out on <sighs> um streaming. So and it's a smaller film. So we're gonna start with non spoilers, just since it's a newer film and it was smaller, and it just came out. And so uh, I know not as many people have seen this. <laughs> as um you know other things so yeah uh, that's how we will do this rick your initial thoughts of three of us yeah and by the way it's the streaming platform it's on it's on netflix netflix yeah um we're we just keep we just keep hitting it out of the park i, I can't remember the last time we were on a string of films back to back to back to back to back to back that have been so good and not only good because you know a good film when you see a good film but it's this time of year when we're watching the best of the best because it's award season. And the past like six films we've seen yeah. are as as good as it gets. And, and I say a lot about this film, but ultimately, what a beautiful, wonderful. I, I personally think this is uh, I'll talk about this in the spoilers because I, I want to give nothing away. If you just want to watch another film. That is beautiful writing, beautiful acting, yeah. a lovely score, and a very human story with some moments that are just as lovely as it gets to watch actors act and directors tell a story. Watch the three of us on Netflix. Yeah. Um, another one that would have changed the favorites and the dummies. Easily. Truly. Uh, and, and okay, so here's the thing. When we did all that, it was the end of the year, and I was like, I need to get to this. This is the time that you do these end of the year things because if you get too far yeah. into the new year, it's it's just weird timing to do something like that. I think right. Uh, so you right. want to do it like right at the end of the year, and so that's why we did that. But during that time, because I heard like, no, wait, 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 and the three films they told us to wait for were uh, Twelfth Fail, 
a off of the core off of the core and three of us and three of us those were the those and there was actually another marathi one that we will get to uh but, well and also and then there was also um uh the play the malayalam yeah, one yeah but people haven't seen that and that's that's a this year film that's not a lot yeah year. that's true that's true that's even a though we film. would have seen it last year because of the the indian film festival Los Angeles. The, the film festival right technically a this year film um, right. and so those were the three and I was like, I will get to them. And we did. Uh, but, uh, if we would have gotten to them before the dummies and our favorites, they would have been totally changed in all categories. Uh, yeah. and so th- we apologize for not getting, but that's, that's what happened. But yes, this film. So fucking brilliant, right? Like this, uh, in yeah. it, and there's all so different, uh, the cough of the core, this, uh, and, uh, in 12th fail, so beautiful in so many different ways, but all three, and in, in including LJP's from last year, but I would actually probably push that below the other ones in terms of what you would submit to the Oscars, just because of yeah. accessibility. That one takes a lot more nuance and like understanding of culture and Indian movies and, right. and stuff like that, even though I would right. still send that one way over what they sent. Um, these three are so accessible to Western audiences uh, yeah. that you could have, if they're if they weren't eligible, like if any of these three weren't eligible for last year, because I don't, it's it gets weird sometimes with how they're when right. they're released. They should be at the forefront for for next year's Oscars if they're eligible. You know, preach, uh, preach, because all three are so brilliant. And so many, this one reminded me of, and I loved it way more than the film I'm about to reference. Um, the, f- the film with uh, Frances McDormand. Uh, a couple years ago, where she was the traveling and the the traveling woman. Yeah, I yeah, forgot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was good. Of, it was good. That uh, That's a good film. I I like this one a lot more. Um, but in, in the, I'm referencing it because it's almost like just a fly on the wall, and these are little segments in your piecing together this person's life. And, have and, you and, seen and Have you seen past lives yet? Not yet. I will win the screen. Okay, you will notice. Um, a huge similarities, mm-hmm. not in the sense in any way, shape or form that I, that I think these stories knew about each other or yeah. copied each other. Yeah. But they're very, very similar films in a lot of ways. Subject matter. Yeah. Um, pacing. Um, silence saying as much as words, sometimes yeah. more. But yeah. even the subject matter, it's very, very similar. And that's a compliment because past lives is in the conversation and, and should be for, for Oscars. I don't know. SAG's kind of screwed the pooch this year in a, a lot of respects. I don't know what the hell went on with the nominating committee this year. Yeah. Um, but and I think I, I do believe anybody, um, any adult can appreciate this film solely because of subject matter. I think, if, you know, anybody who's not mature is going to be bored because they're not going to understand what's going on. Yeah, the nuances. But if you yeah, but if you've got some life experience under your belt, not just biological, because there's people who can be 45, 50 years old and they're still really immature. I mean, you've you've been around the block and you've lived some life and mm-hmm. you've seen some pain. This is going to have some connectivity and profundity for you. And, and it's one of those things where you see a mirror reflected in who we all are. I actually, I'll talk about this in the spoilers too. I would have given it a different title for a particular reason that's related to a spoiler aspect of it. But yeah, the score is lovely. Jai Deep and Shafali are, are just, there's one, one particular moment that is so lovely. She's lovely. Um, I, I just. Yeah. She, she I'm, actually, <laughs> that would have been a direct change to the dummies is she would have won best actress. Uh, for, for I, I couldn't argue with that. And I couldn't I gave, argue with that. I gave it to Ashwarya, and she's still deserving. But uh, obviously, I think I would agree with you. I think uh, I would have given it to her. I think I would have given it to Shafali Shah. Yeah, um, I think I would have. And Jadeep would have been nominated. Whether he would have won, I don't know. I'd have to think about that one more. Uh, she had obviously the more complex role, even though I thought Jadeep did a phenomenal job. And I'm loving his choices because obviously, when he started, when he started out. He was probably in the same uh, that Nawaz was. They gave him the gun and they were like, be a villain. And he's a great villain. Um, but now that like, especially since after Patal Lock and everybody's like, oh, this guy's good. He's just like, I get to choose whatever I want. I'm getting to sink my teeth into fun, fun things. And he did such a good job. Um, obviously, Shafali 
is uh, you you be hard pressed to find five actresses better than Shafali Shah in in India. Just different. All you, you know. would get is different. You wouldn't get better because she is always so fucking good. Uh, and this one, she like she usually carries this regalness almost about her in terms or, or like this a strength. Yeah, she almost had and and not to say she wasn't strong because she was. But she was almost carrying herself lighter. It felt like she was, I, I don't know really how to explain it, but I was watching, I was like, this doesn't seem like the same Shafali Shah. And obviously she's just a phenomenal actress and she's able to it's, be able to do that. She just did such a good job. It's a testament to her capacity because you're absolutely right. Her essence, her persona, I think is a person because it conveys in, in most of the characters she portrays, irrespective of what they're going through. Yeah, She has a kind of strength. It's not the same kind of regality that Taboo has, but it yeah. is similar in terms of this sense of foundational power that is inherent in who she is. And in this character, it's still there, but there's some cracks in it. There's some fragility to this yeah. character, not brokenness. Yeah. There's a lot of fragility that is, is simply – the only way you do this is when you're an actor who has the capacity to fully incarnate a character from the text – and your backstory work, and you're not trying to indicate or pre-shape anything, you are simply so aware of what you're doing as a craftsman that you can you can you can do that. It reminded me a lot. I don't think you've seen May December yet, right? Not yet, no. Uh SAG screwed the pooch. I don't know why they didn't nominate Charles Melton. He's getting an Oscar nomination. Oh, his wow. his his character in May December is a very complex character that at face value most people might not recognize but for anybody who's really familiar with script and character analysis and uh, uh he he she did a similarly oscar worthy level performance oh easily and she has such subtlety in it because if this was in a inexperienced actor's hands they would oh god it would be indicating it'd be awful it, it, it would be it would be painful to watch because they'd be, be like, ruined i have to show you without giving anything away i have to show you what's going on right now and constantly she, it'd, be, it'd be awful yeah i could visualize it in my head and how awful it would be um and she same uh, with Jaideep. yeah and it, she uh, you could just see that she, <laughs> she the phenomenal actress she is man she just she doesn't have to do anything but obviously you're gonna you're, you're gonna appreciate past lives when you watch it because it's it's um very very there's a lot of similarities. Yeah. A lot of similarities. Yeah. Her and Jaideep did a did such a good job. They had such great chemistry. I I felt their past uh in 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 the subtle in the subtleness of the writing, which was a uh, shout out to that. I thought the husband, also who we've seen in, in quite a few things, actually did a very good job. He had as I, I I would even be tempted to put him in a supporting role in, in the dummies. Um and Jaideep's wife was wonderful. Yeah, she was wonderful as well. The writing in this was subtle and beautiful. Um, the score so human. was so good. It was just like the essence. If you don't like fly on the wall films, you're not going to like this film because this is like the, almost the essence of a, well, a, a, a fly on the wall film. So, so many films this year. I was making a list. I'm going to put it on Instagram of the films that I've loved this year, both from Hollywood and from India. The majority of them are fly on the wall films. There's yeah. there's this one. There's Cough of the Core. There's the play. Um, there's yeah, Twelfth Fail. There's um, Past Lives, Anatomy of a Fall. These are all the the kind of films where you just want to sit back and everybody's so believable. You just feel like you're watching human beings go through these experiences and you feel this connectivity because it's universal. And yeah, this easily could be a, a submission because like Twelfth Fail. Like Kothal the core, they have definitive Indianness, and they have universal connectivity that everybody from any country would connect with. Yeah, um, and so yeah, elevative. <laughs> basically, thank you for for waiting because I know a lot of you have been screaming for this. Um, thank you for 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 waiting. But if you haven't seen it. Please go watch it now because we're going to get to Please. some spoils right now. It's on Netflix. Um, and it's actually only, it's like an hour and a half. So it's a very short, very short Indian film. So that's a uh, wonderful journey. And it's it's beautiful. It's subtle. It's 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 wonderful in all the ways that, that you like if you love cinema. Um, so please go watch that because now we're going to get into some spoils. Get spoiled, bitch. 
There's the cue. This is for those of you who have seen the film. Get spoiled, bitch. <laughs> uh, there you go. Uh, uh, what were you going to say? You said you wanted to something about the title. You said, yeah. Well, the first thing I thought when I was watching this was, in many respects, this movie is a ghost story. Yeah, I can see. You that. could yeah. take this story and Mike Flanagan, who does these kinds of things, he could easily turn this into a horror film. Not because there's anything inherently scary, but because this is a story about people who have hauntings from their past. Yeah. And because so much of the film also included more than I anticipated, it really did include um, Jaideep's wife. Yeah. More than I was expecting with a film called Three of Us. And with what she's dealing with, I, I don't have a problem with The Three of Us. I think it's a nice title. But a film more along the lines of, say, just remembering. I think that's too on the nose. It, it, and maybe I'm wrong in that way. No, I think that's I, and that, that's just my first thought. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a different a title. More... I wouldn't mind a different title, but I something too on the nose. Like, like I don't, I don't like. Like past lives works, and you're gonna you're gonna see the similarities. Okay. I just and I I this is one of those films that is is so superb at show don't tell. There is zero exposition in script. Yeah. You figure it we, out as you're going along for sure. You realize she has early onset dementia without anyone saying the word dementia. You just, you know, because the writing is so good and the performances are so good that that's what's going on. And you understand these people have a history and no one needs to say anything. You know, something happened at the well. Um, and there's, there were, I need to know I, the shot when she's talking to the woman that people said was a witch. Mm -hmm. she's sitting there and they have that, sh that stagnant shot on her and there's an opening to her left that takes you out into the night sky. And there is a moon with clouds passing by it. I thought if you guys got that shot with just nature helping you out, what a serendipitous shot. I'd love to know if it was, I, I have a feeling it was, I don't think that was CGI VFX. Yeah. Hard to um, tell nowadays, but yeah, but it was, it was man, great. It was great. That whole scene I thought was beautiful because it was, it, it left you with a lot of questions, but it also gave you a lot of answers of, of a little bit into her, her past. Um, but it was also so like unique. It wasn't like normally like with some of these stories, like of people, one of the worst diseases in, in the history of Ugh, mankind. Evil. Uh, watching somebody you love and, and them, fading away basically uh yeah. that's one of the worst things i can think of um agreed but a lot of times it'll be like stereotypical things like oh i want to remember this or i want to like and they're doing certain things but the, like this one didn't really go in that route because they didn't really like they didn't even go that too much into jaydeep and her and what their relationship exactly was they left a lot of things unanswered yeah. um they obviously they gave you some answers but like they kind of let you piece it together. And I, I, I love that because and the, the complexities of each of their marriages, uh, but mm -hmm. also the supportingness of each of their partners. Great, great spouses who are so understanding and loving. Because you could totally understand like Jadeep's wife and be <laughs> like, well, why is why is this lady here all these years later and she wants to see you? Why? And you'd understand yeah. it. I was like, no, that what? Why? And now you're writing poetry again. Yeah. And then the other guy was like, you never, you never loved me like this. Yeah. You were never this happy. Yeah. And so obviously these natural questions that would come about in this yeah. type of situation. Um, but I thought it was beautifully written and, and how they, they did all that. I thought. I, yeah. Cause they never got angry with each other. It didn't turn into fights. Mm -hmm. It turned into wanting to understand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the, the other moment I was referencing that I is for me, there's many times there's takeaways from a film where you just are impressed with something. There's a, there's a moment, for example, in Maestro where Bradley Cooper's conducting the London symphony. That's a standout moment that you remember from the film. The standout moment for me is that beautiful conversation they have at the top of the Ferris wheel. Yeah, that was a great one. And the choice, to, I don't know how they rigged that shot, but I think to they were rigged that up. shot yeah. up there, and they had some background people who had to sit there and stuck on the Ferris wheel, but 
they didn't move. They just kept us tight on that beautiful, tender, vulnerable, but still protective. And, and the sweetness with which they both have this deep connection, but they know their lives are so different. So they don't want to do anything. They like each other's spouses. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and another film, if you guys are interested in watching a really magnificent portray- portrayal of early onset dementia that goes much deeper into symptomatic problems, uh, Julianne Moore and Still Alice is is a yeah. fantastic, fantastic film about this. Or the, I think it was The Father from a few years ago, right? Great film with Anthony Hopkins. Oh, oh God. Great, great. Film. But this was this was different. Very really different. lovely in that we just got to see a couple of days where she knows the diagnosis, but she's yet to really start to get the symptoms strongly that it starts to affect her. She's she knows it's coming. Yeah. And that that's that I thought it was that uh sucks. Beautiful um multiple things here, but when she got up and danced and then she just Oh that moment what beautifully done by Shafali. Um, and subtly done, but you're like, you can see it in her, in her face. I don't know if she forgot where she was or if she's just, yes, she forgot the steps or she was always a little bit behind. Yeah. Um, and you don't know if that was an experience or just what was going on, but then she opened her eyes and you saw the horror of basically what was going on in her head. Uh, I thought that or was, she's, or maybe, maybe she was terrified that she's going to forget this. And, and I, yeah. I felt that the cinematography and direction choice in that moment was superb. It let her run to that column and they just left it there and they left us distanced from her with that column there and they didn't move that shot. It was perfect. And I thought the, uh, the end shot was actually very brilliant. I agree. Her standing at the, I believe it was a well. Right? At the well. Yeah. Um, just some symbolism there. Lovely. And stuff like that and it was at a moment that you're like oh i thought the film was going to keep going uh here uh but they kind of i i you know i love ending on a strong shot uh yeah with films and i thought that shot was absolutely brilliant left you with so many questions but gave you enough answers uh as well um it was just this 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 entire film was absolutely and i don't even Artistically, I don't know how he would rank these films like Gotha the Core, Three of Us, and, oh, wow. and this one. And then LJP's film from last, equally as of a brilliant film, uh, just in a very different way um, uh, as all these other ones. Um, but in all three of us, I don't know what would have been left off of our list in terms of best picture because it would have made it really hard. Uh, we had, I think, nine, I think, in our in our best picture. And three of these films that we just saw would have a hundred percent, if not won it, um, been in the, uh, been in the conversation for best picture yeah. along with a whole bunch of other things. I would have changed all the categories, um, acting, directing. Um, it would have been very different. And so yeah, I and that why you guys, the, and the final shot you referenced, you know, the, really the, 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 the icing on the cake, the cherry on top of the Sunday, the piece de resistance is when you reach the end of a film and when they they end it and the feeling you have is a satisfaction that causes you to go, ah, oh, because it's such a good ending. This is one of those films. It didn't remind it, that, me, that, but some people said when they watched this and the holdovers back to back and gave them the same like feels. Um I don't know if it gave of me the holdovers. Thing. Yeah, I was like, it was very different feels for me for the holdovers, even though I get it. If you too. you're talking like a, a satisfied vibe, I guess, because uh, it is. As, um, but the holdovers are very different. So I don't very different film. I don't know about that because uh, it's it's hard. Anytime, Equally brilliant. Anytime you do um, something with Alzheimer's or dementia. Man, those are hard films because next. And I should have been. When I was talking about the films that are, have come out, Holdovers is another one. If you haven't seen the Holdovers, please watch the Holdovers. It's a great film. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but other than that, man, that was uh, what a film, man. What a film. Uh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, none of these films can be in our dummies next year, uh, except for uh, 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 the the play. Obviously, the play that came out. Um, unless they end up including some of these in the Oscars, I guess for next year, then we'll we'll revisit that. And I guess technically, has Berlin had theatrical distribution yet? No, but we included it in last year's. Uh, so we'll see. Okay. We'll, see, we'll see what it does. 
Um, because yeah, that, that has not had theatrical distribution, but right. um, very strange. I mean, maybe this wasn't submitted to um, the film festival, Indian Film Festival, Los Angeles, but very strange that this one wasn't included. Yeah, but you never know if they actually submitted it. So, well, if they already had Netflix distribution, they probably thought, and Netflix may have said no. Well, no, Netflix was uh, with uh, Vishal's film. Netflix was there. Oh, that's true. Kufia, Netflix, they were. Netflix, Netflix. That's true. Netflix was maybe there. That's, maybe they, I don't know. Who I knows? have no idea. Uh, I'm just no idea. Anyways, if you've seen it, obviously, if you're here, I hope you saw the film already. Uh, if not, yeah. please watch filming. Now you're all spoiled. Uh, so that sucks for you. Um, but uh, let us know what you thought about the film. Uh, if you liked it, if you didn't like it, you're weird. Um, and what should be the next film we watch down below.